Today, we're testing three different kinds of oak in mead. Let's get started. So today's test is real simple. I've been searching for three forms of oak, of the same oak, to do a big oak test. So I finally tracked down French oak, or I should say medium toast French oak cubes, medium toast French oak chips, and a medium toast French oak spiral. Between these three things, these three oak forms, I am going to do this very fun test. So simply stated, I am putting the prescribed amount based off of what the package slash things I found online state for oaking a brew. The base brew we are making or using today is an orange blossom traditional mead. So I took basically a gallon of the orange blossom traditional, put it into a gallon carboy, and I did three of those, and I added my prescribed amount of oak. So you can see here on the screen how much oak I added for each one. I also decided I'm gonna go ahead and base my times on the oak or oaking process based on what the package says. So the oak chips were setting at about 14 days for the prescribed amount of time. The oak cubes said six to eight weeks and the oak spiral said six to eight weeks. So I did six weeks for the oak cubes and spiral. I let those set. This test is real simple. I just oaked them in different manners. We are now going to jump to a taste test to see the differences between these three. So let's see what the differences are. Here we are, back. finale of this video. So I've talked to BC about this for a long time because this was an idea I'd mentioned. I wanted to do it forever, finally was able to. But we have three different forms of oak. One of these, the, they don't know what is what. I know what's what. Um, one of these used oak cubes, one used oak chips, and one used yeah. an oak spiral. Okay. Um, and I went by the standard ratios per gallon that people would say, just mm -hmm. on in, in general, or off of what the package says. Okay. And then also on the timing too. So chips were in for X amount of time, the spiral is in for X amount of time, and the cubes, so okay. I'm not giving those details either. Again. So let's get started. Let's do A. Start with A, which you will know what we're tasting on the screen right now. So let's get started. This is just an orange blossom. I'll tell you, it's got a. No, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> give us the little details. Orange, orange blossom, blossom honey, okay. about 14, 15 percent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe 13. 13. 13 12, How, 13. How old what? is it? Um, this one is. It can't be that old. Uh, I think we're Seven. like four months old okay. now, maybe. What yeast? Just really <laughs> pulling the strings. Oh, this one. So this is. Uh, I have it ready. Oh, you'll uh, Hornendal. Oh, nice. Okay. It's a it's a cousin to Lutra. Mm -hmm. Sameish yeast. I think Lutra is an isolate from Hornendal, if I remember correctly. Yeah. You pick anything up on the nose of A. I mean, it smells like orange blossom honey. Mm -hmm. I snuck a taste in there. It tastes like orange blossom honey. It's, um, did you back sweeten or did it? No, end? this one ended dry. Ended, sorry, sweet. Okay. I started it pretty so say. I started it pretty high. I also used my heat wrap at the time and I think that it just, with nutrients and everything and it just didn't get all the way down. This tastes like a kvike mead. Mm -hmm. It's got that clean, but also slightly estery character that I prefer. Let me look for one thing real fast. And now, Doing the Most presents Kvike School. So Hornendal is like, uh, it's a kvike yeast, so it's a Norwegian farmhouse ale yeast. But it's a blend of okay. yeasts. Okay. So there's several different kvikes within the family the, the one 
And then my favorite yeast, Lutra, is an isolate where they have found one mm. yeast in there that does things really well and clean, and they have isolated that into its own strain. Yeah. And so Hornendal can do some funky stuff. It can be clean, but there's something in there yeah, that is not odd. orange blossom honey. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a yeast character. Mm -hmm. I won't say the word, the thing it makes me think of, but I will at the end, and I'll see if you agree. Okay. Disagree. So we're drinking the the unoaked version. I kept original, so they can also taste it too. So this is baseline, yeah, pre oak. Yeah, it's still in there. Mm -hmm. the The orange blossom character is really nice in this, though. Mm -hmm. I will say I, I've um, back to one. Crystal's honey. That's the honey company. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was thinking of. this is Crystal's orange blossom honey. The oaking is very light. Mm -hmm on this one. You just get a little bit of that grit. Mm -hmm. A little bit of that sandpaper kind of effect. Yep. But I'm not tasting wood or char or... I get a little bit of like vanilla note and but it's like a it's like a softness it's added I would say but I don't know if it's that prevalent. But yeah, you're right. It's not maybe that could have been an error of me not leaving them in long enough. I don't know. Like I said I you tried followed to, conventional wisdom. tried to follow what the thing says so. Okay. B is this right here. <laughs> I will say overall, I really enjoy this mead. Mm -hmm. The sweetness is like just right at the right level. <clears throat> Not too much. Yeah, it doesn't cover anything up. It is nice when you don't have to back sweep. It just mm -hmm. does it itself. Now it's not advisable all the time, <laughs> but nobody likes bottle bombs. Yeah. This one's a bit grittier than mm -hmm. the first one. Yep. Like, there's a little, it, it grips on just a little bit longer. Do you get any difference in the oak characters as far as, obviously some, the flavor presence is different. It's like a, a semi-sweet uh, aspect about it. Uh -huh. Kind of gives it more body. It's a little fuller than the original, mm -hmm. than A. I would say, yeah. yeah, I do get more oakiness, as you guys are saying as well. Yeah, I think you're right. There's just like a, a little bit more body. Mm -hmm. Still has that weird funk that I can't explain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Definitely more pre present and B, I would say. The oak is for sure. making its way out. So we're, now we're going on to C, which is this. Theoretically, they should all be the same level sweetness. It's just the oak. Hmm. This one's woodier. Mm -hmm. Like there's a, a. It feels like just like a little bit of raw wood flavor in here. I get that raw wood yeah. flavor. You know what I mean? Like, like when you, wood. like when you walk through the lumber section at Home Depot. And you open your mouth and. <laughs> get the, get the sawdust. In your mouth. Just like yeah, you, you can taste it. Yeah. Yeah. You got taste buds in your nose, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just like it's. I'm trying to like really pick apart what the differences yeah, might no. be here. Lumberyard mead. Uh, it's and this one's like got a little bit of sawdust character to it. I should have told you guys. I went to Lowe's and found just a two by four. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I made the wood. I chopped up the wood. <laughs> I was telling you <laughs> when you first told me about this. I said you need to grow your own oak tree. Like that's how you do this Hardcore. the most. <laughs> <laughs> Doing the <So> most. <laughs> Uh, okay. Maybe next time. So I don't know what order you've poured these in, but I feel like the further down we go, the woodier we get. Oh, okay. Like, That's it feels great. like light, a little bit more tannic, a little bit more grip, and then this one is grippy and also kind of tastes like wood. Yes. I would agree. I would say I think that C is definitely the most woody, B is mid-tier, and then <laughs> mid -tier. <laughs> tier <It's> list. <laughs> And then A is is definitely it's not as strong, which mm -hmm. could be user error, could be to the to the test itself. Should we guess the uh, the type of wood that was in? Do you want to guess? Yeah, uh, I wanted thinking that A had cubes, okay, and C definitely had the spirals, and the chips were in B. Okay, B Wait, C. What you got? So you said A cubes. B was the chips. B chips. And then C spirals. Spiral. 
Yeah, I think I would agree with that. Yeah. Okay. You ready for the answer? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Time to find out. A was the spiral. Oh. oh. Right to the heart. <laughs> B were the cubes. And C was the C chips. C was the, was chips. the chips. Huh. Interesting. Interesting factoid on these to give you a timeline. Spiral and cubes were in for six weeks each. And wow. I used the prescribed amount, which I got down to the mm -hmm. gram on it and how much it's supposed to add. Impressive. The chips were in for, I think, 14 days at max. I don't think yeah. I Interesting. pushed them past hmm. very long. Well, I can say at least in this test, the chips taste a whole lot more like wood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> than these other two. And, you know, I do think that the sparrow could have probably stayed in, I don't know, I think it's like I said six to eight weeks, but I decided to go and pull them out at the same time just to be fair. Because cubes, they were, I think they also say six to eight weeks or something like that. So, hmm. Oh, I mean, should we discuss which we prefer? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's some important information. I think I prefer B. Mm, okay. I think it's the most balanced of the three. Okay. You know what's funny is I thought when I I did a small tasting of the chips after 14 days, and I was like, I can barely get any chip flavor. Like I don't get that much oak. I'm like, mm. I feel like these two are gonna swamp the spiral, and the cubes are just gonna swamp it. Apparently not, though. I guess mm. it's interesting. And which yeah. one was B? Um, cubes or spiral? The B cube. is the cubes. Cubes. Okay. Yeah. I think I liked the uh, the chips. <clears throat> They're a little, the, the, you know, the mesquite hardwood flavor is a mm -hmm. little more uh, apparent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like. I definitely like B more. But part of this is your preference. You know, do you like? Uh, I wouldn't say that one is drier than the other by any means, but dry and woodiness can sometimes go mm -hmm. together when you get into wine land. <laughs> so yeah. I feel like if you're a dry wine person, um, then you might be closer to this. Or if you're a sweet mead person, you know, it kind of plays into that. But I definitely prefer B more. I'm a little bummed out by the spiral. This has turned me off from using spirals because I feel like you, yeah. you have better options. Yeah. What do you think it is? The surface area? the chips i don't know what's well, weird i literally showed him earlier though a mead i made and i put a spiral in for three days mm -hmm. and by that third day it it had given enough flavor that i was like holy crap that's yeah. three days Too when much. it says six weeks on the package so i don't know if it was situational mm -hmm. I don't, that's a weird weird thing that is weird it's like it changes around a little bit yeah interesting i can't get over how woody that oh is. can i give you my my <laughs> The flavor, it's kind of dissipated some, but for a while, this reminded me, the flavor reminded me of a corn tortilla. Oh, that's awful. Like a little <laughs> bit of a corn tortilla, like, I don't know what it was. Yeah. It's like you're only eating corn tortilla. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Do you get any of that? No, I don't pick okay. that up in there. Maybe that's just my, my brain the, twisting. The only, it. like, Maybe. what may or may not be considered an off flavor I pick up on is that yeast character, that, yep. that little bit of bready funk that's in there. Yeah. I don't know, I get a little bit of, like, corn flour. Just, yeah. a, just a tiny bit, now that you say that. It could be placebo. <laughs> I was like, ooh, this does taste I just, a little like, bit. now, ever since I've had it, and it's not, like, disastrously bad to the point where I'm like, oh, I can't drink this, but that's, my brain's like, okay, I got a little bit of that profile in here, so. I think it's nice. Yeah. I mean, overall, it's a nice mead. It, it did turn out very good, and even the base value mm -hmm. of it, without the oak, mm -hmm. is not bad at yeah. all. So... I thought this was super interesting. Of course, there are other a million other kinds of oak you can use. You know, you can get different woods in general. Now, um, as I'm as I found, you can't get every single oak in every single varietal. Mm -hmm. You might not be able to find Hungarian oak chips. I'm sure you can. I don't know, but I wasn't able to get some of these things. So if you're able to try to uh, take some of them. I would, I'm not going to give a definitive, and I don't think we're going to give it a definitive, don't use this or that. Sorry, people who wanted that. But uh, you will have varied results based on what meads you make, what wines and beers and stuff. So mm -hmm. taste test, try things, decide what you like, but you can use this video as reference for some yeah. character profile development. So thank you guys for being a part of this taste test. This has been a, a long awaited one for me. I've been wanting to do this for a while. So. Thanks again. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.